Today we are debating Scottish education with schools across Scotland closed as part of the first ongoing national teaching strike in 40 years. And that disruption and loss of learning is landing on a generation that has already lost so much in the pandemic. And the real impact of which the government continues to refuse to quantify and for which a new response is deemed unworthy of countenance. And strike action is uh, certainly... Cabinet Secretary. Would he agree that the actual ASO statistics, which will be published next week, and the work around the health and wellbeing census actually allows us to look at what's happened and to see what action needs to be taken on that? Michael Mara. I would say, obviously, I haven't seen those statistics. I'm sure if, if the Cabinet Secretary wanted to talk about them in any detail, she could have brought them with her to Parliament today. And I would, I would, I would, I would, well, maybe she, maybe she hasn't seen them. So let's wait and see what, what it says. And we'll, I hope there'll be a statement on those statistics when they're produced. And we can have the debate in Parliament as a result of if she's promising that discussion should be happened. And first, uh, Mr. Mr. Officer, Mr. Mark, I, can I just, please? I'm having three different conversations go on, which is too, too many. Mr. Mayor, please resume. Thank you, President Officer. Strike action is a failure on the part of this government, and their public pay plans and industrial relations are pitiful. They are characterised by bad faith and a lack of professionalism, illustrated by what was quite literally a last-minute offer. Emailed to the EIS at 4.29pm when their pay committee was meeting at 4.30pm. And that offer had sat on the Cabinet Secretary's desk for three and a half weeks. Nobody on these benches dismisses the challenges of meeting public sector pay demands with inflation running at horrendous levels due to the grotesque economic incompetence of the Conservative government. But what we should all expect are those challenging negotiations, I understand they are challenging, to be conducted professionally and in good faith. The Cabinet Secretary knows that a fair deal will have to be done, and the sooner that happens, the better for pupils across Scotland. And the warm words in the government amendment today about our teachers are not borne out in these actions, just as the list of working groups and reviews do not add up to a proper education policy that can transform the lives of our children and build the stronger Scotland that we need for the decades ahead. And for each budget cycle, we're in the depths of one right now, this Cabinet Secretary and her ministers comprehensively lose the argument for education inside this sclerotic government. Cuts to school budgets, cuts to colleges, cuts to universities, and they comprehensively fail the test of leadership too. Colleges are crying out for a decision of any kind whatsoever as to what they should be doing. What do they get? A coherence review, to be followed by a statement of intent, to inform a purpose and principles plan. All impenetrable babble. So what does it actually mean? I'll translate, presiding officer. It means the government does not have a clue what it is doing. And that's illustrated by a skills review lauded in the amendment that the government have lodged today that I would remind the chamber is only happening because Audit Scotland were utterly damning of a lack of any ministerial direction whatsoever. They don't have a clue what they want to achieve. And the core STEM subjects that will provide the bedrock of any future prosperity are in long-term decline, with dropping teacher numbers, dropping number of students and dropping levels of attainment. It is urgent and it is happening now. Where is the response? Filed, unfortunately, under too difficult. So it's a government without a vision or a purpose for education in Scotland. And it's little wonder then that the reform programme we have been discussing for our national education bodies is collapsing into the rebranding exercise that we always suspected it would be. That process has been run by the managers of the existing Education Scotland and the Inspector, and of course the SQA. Maybe the Cabinet Secretary does not hear the young people of Scotland. And I have been involved in that national conversation on a day-to-day -day basis, visiting schools, speaking to teachers, speaking to pupils, and engaging with them in this parliament each time that is a possibility is there. And I can tell the Cabinet Secretary just how angry those people, or young people are about what happened to them over the pandemic. Not just the ones whose appeals for exceptional circumstances the Cabinet Secretary chucked in the bin, but how they were all betrayed by their qualifications agency and by the incompetence of a Deputy First Minister who lurched out of one mess and right into the next, time and time again. Ken Muir was absolutely clear in his report, which we all said we would honour, 
that public faith in the qualifications agency was of the utmost importance, presiding officer, that people must have confidence in that process, the outcomes and the certificates that should be a passport to a better life. With any currency, as Liz Trust learned to all of our costs, confidence is everything. Ken Muir's key recommendation to rebuild confidence was to separate out regulation and accreditation from the awarding body. So the reaction of the Cabinet Secretary further laid out today is scarcely believable. Under pressure from the managers who are calling the shots, she bends to their will and refuses to take the key decision, backing the status quo and more of the same. What that betrays, I will in one second, what that betrays is the same lack of understanding of what has happened that was displayed by our predecessor because they got it wrong and they got it all wrong year after year in the pandemic. Yes, sir. Stephen Kerr. I'm astonished, um, as I'm sure other members will be, at the lacklustre speech that we heard from the Cabinet Secretary. Does Michael Maher agree with me that she seems to be a prisoner of the worst side of the Scottish educational establishment? Michael Mara. What I can say is that there's a real need for change. And we have to understand, uh, Mr Kerr, and I think everybody, everyone that looks at this in good conscience would understand, is the reform process we're in cannot be a cosmetic fix. It can't be new logos on the business cards above the same old names on the business cards below. And we can't allow the new qualifications body to mark its own homework. The change must be real. And the change could not be more needed. Despite calls from the Education Committee in this Parliament, there's no proper government assessment of the impact of the pandemic. Yet we see the consequences everywhere. Key groups, P3 and P4, S2 and S3, groups of young people adrift and teaching staff struggling to cope. Riots in Kirkton, Dundee, Nidre in Edinburgh and disruption across Scotland. Police saying that a cohort of kids, and the police directly saying this, have lost years of structure and community, love and care due to lockdown and isolation. And what do we get? No response, no concerted response, no support for our schools or colleges, not a word. Where is the plan? We have attendance down, presiding officer, across the country. Where is the plan to re-engage? East Lothian Council have started a programme with Edinburgh College to work intensively with families. Where is the national response? Presiding officer, in conclusion, the future of this country depends on the decisions that these ministers make. The greatest economic levers available anywhere are in their hands. We have a small window to make good the harm of the pandemic, but that window is closing.